Here we go, guys. This is uh, another one, right? We're looking at this as the Grand Prix um, knockout, actually, here with, uh, it was Hikaru versus uh, Richard Report, Big Rich, right? So, okay, cool. This is the first game. If y'all missed it, cool, great. You're here right now. You're going to catch I'm trying to exit out of this video up here. Okay. All right. Um, Where is that at? That's this part. Why? Okay, cool. Here we go. We're about to look at this game in detail, right? This was the first one. What's up, Macron? What's going on? Here we go. So we had d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, and takes, takes, bishop g5. Boom. So we got queen's gambit, queen's gambit decline, or sorry, queen's gambit, um, yeah, queen's gambit decline. Right. So we have queen, queen's gambit decline here with the bishop on g5. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just regular, regular standard stuff. Knight f3, bishop d3, rook c1, a3. Like, this is not the stuff that I play, but Hikaru plays this a lot. Queen c2, queen b3. He's played many different lines if you check them in the database here. But he plays this quite often. So you play the queen c2 one, right? e3, bishop goes to d3. It's pretty easy setup here. You also have the Carlsbad structure, right? And in fact, you know, I like to call this the he Carlsbad structure, you know? <laughs> Understanding the pawn structures is 100% important, right? This is a Carlsbad structure, but, but you know, basically white's doing it. Carlsbad meaning like you have to do what's the plan is the minority attack. So you're going to push these absolutely motivated Mark says Carl's bad with the sleep, the sleep face, right? Because it'll put you to sleep as, as like stuff is very boring. Bruh. I mean, it is. It really is. This is why I, you will never catch me playing this kind of chess right here ever in life. This ain't me. I don't do it. I don't try. But I mean, this is stand like, I mean, obviously this is still great chess here. Like this is excellent. I mean, it's very solid and it's classical chess, right? He Carl even plays the Berlin, right? The Berlin. Bruh. Are you kidding me? Garbage. You know how we feel about the bird. But Hikaru plays and it's rock solid. It's definitely rock solid. I just, it's the same for me. But, uh, and also Hikaru's half man, half everything else. So that's a different story. E3, knight to d7 though. We're in the game. So knight to d7. Thanks for the follow. Green leech. And bishop goes to d3 with h7 intentions. You can play on both sides of the board here. But definitely you have to remember the pawn structure. I remember I, I got this from a... Um, uh, another coach I used to work with, and he said, the pawn structure is the GPS of the game. The pawn structure is the GPS of the game. So if you know that this is the Carlsbad structure, you know that we need to do a minority attack. And in fact, if Black knows that too, of course they both know this. I mean, it's just Richard Report and Hikaru. They absolutely know this. But, uh, of course, they can save it now. You could use it. You could use it right now. A3, B4, Rick B1, right? Castling. The classical. There's many ways you could play it. The flexibility, the options is what, you know, makes this such a rich game. Even the F3, 92, right? If you want to play more aggressive, like me, I would probably play F3, 92. Castle, oh, Castle Queen size scary. But honestly, it's my style, and I'm definitely going to fight to the finish. With Castling long, Playing F3, playing E4, put the knight on E2, maybe even H3, right? Strange, but yes, I mean, it's, it's necessary. I need to play dynamic. Play at knight F4, take on G5 if he moves the knight to B6. Knight H5, open the center up. There's a lot of play, right, from white side here. Um, and obviously black as well. There's so many ideas. Knight H5, though, from rich. And here we go. Big rich making moves that be all weird. Bruh. You know, he does this stuff all the time. That's why I'm a fan of his play, because he just does stuff. Like, he literally does stuff. That's the best way to talk about Richard's game. He just does stuff. Like, what did he be coming up with? Hey, what does he think about? Like, what is his thinking process sometimes? This is a little bit different because uh, his move is definitely show that. I can stay longer, but I got to get back to coding practice. Shout out to you, Romeo. Thanks, man. It is kind of late. Shout out to you if you watch the Super Bowl. Hopefully, your team won. Uh, the Mine did. The Rams, right? Yeah. Yeah, because of the Detroit Lions, right? He used to play with us. So shout out to Matt Stafford over there. Yeah, so um, but thanks for stopping in, man. This is in this position, I would already panic no matter what. I'm like, having no idea. Yikes, smack right? You gotta work on your game. Cereal ball. Yeah, cereal ball, correct. Yeah, like well, like one hand said. Okay, so Bishop takes e7, takes, and then castles queen sign, which was very cool. I like this. This is a, a sort of an aggression, like this is the way I was trying to go anyway. I didn't really want to trade the bishop. And the knight is not really, I mean, it's misplaced, but it's going to come back to the center easily. Black, if he castles this way, then we, we literally have an open attack. Everything's pointing to this way. So, of course, he plays a natural move, knight to b6. He's probably going to castle queenside as well. h3 with the g4 intentions and stuff like that. g6. Yeah, he just played g6. Maybe put the knight on g7. Or maybe bishop f5 at the right point. So, knight g7, bishop f5. That's a plan right there. That's strong, strong stuff. Very strong. 
Knight of three, knight g7, g4, stopping bishop. <laughs> I'm telling you, this stuff is ridiculously strong, guys. He understands knight g7, reason for bishop f5 is to trade off the bishop. I want to trade off this very strong bishop you have. And mine is the lead, the weaker bishop having my pawns on light squares. Look at all the pawns on light squares. I would love to trade this bishop off. But this bishop is very strong. Obviously, maybe we have some targets later, especially if we can loosen these pawns and keeping some on white. For instance, a bishop like, obviously, not getting this bishop here, but being able to gobble up some of the pawns at the right moments, especially in end games. So bishop f5 would be good, but g4 stopped that, which is very strong for Mikaro. So bishop e6, he said, all right, bro, well, I got to move it, though. I got to develop. So bishop e6 makes sense. He's about to get out the way. All right, let's see. I don't know what Hikaru did here. I can't remember. I remember majority of the game because I was watching, like, the end parts. But here, towards the middle game here, I don't remember. Maybe there's king b1. In fact, chat, this is on us as we learn together, as we look at these games. Our goal here is to actually try to figure out some of these moves ourselves and also learn um, even if you've seen the game, right? So here, I'm thinking king to b1 or rook e1 with the e4 option. I do want to break. I do want to break. King b1. 92, maybe. I mean, definitely king b1. King b1. And I've seen, um, I've actually seen Hikaru do this. He's done like a king b1, especially with his open c file, right? So king b1 and then rook c1. And it's just like p over here. Which makes sense. I've actually done that before too. But this is kind of cool that you just use the C file that's open like this just to do stuff. So that's pretty pretty awesome. Okay, but Bishop went to E6. Rook E1. 94. 95. That's probably no good. This doesn't do anything. Uh, definitely King B1. And just centralize. Maybe put the rooks in the center. Try to break. But it's not necessary to break. And it also makes this isolated. It also makes this an isolated pawn. Maybe we just improve the position. Plays 92. That makes the engine not like it too much, but it's a natural move putting the knight on f4. Now I remember most of the game. Now I'm starting to remember. At least the ideas part. Let's see what the engine likes here. King b1. Okay. And a4. Uh, not playing that right now. I mean, yes, this is Carl's bad, but like his king has not committed yet. So a4, I wouldn't like. Maybe I would. Feels like I jumpstart his attack though. Let's see. I'm just curious. A4. Castles. I guess he's okay, huh? I mean, what would I play? I don't know. Rook G1. Thanks for the follow, Nubo. Rook G1. And it seems like it seems like he about to steamroll me, bro. H4. Wow. Just don't even care about anything. Engine loves to do this. Pawn takes. Knight takes. Okay, Rook C8. What I'm doing here is trying to put pressure on myself to see how the engine will handle this. King B1, I mean, as a human, this looks like you about to, I mean, Queen B4, like, look at this, bro, hold up. Queen B4. Engine always flexing, right? Exactly. Queen B4. And now you're supposed to trade queens. Oh, now it's a problem. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, now it's a problem. Oh, now you want to trade queens. That's what I thought, bro. I knew this thing looked right. Something didn't look right. A4. That's not a like an engine. Like you don't do it right now. You would wait to his king to commit on this side of the board for you to even think about pushing these pawns here. Like the engine pushed it like right here. Um, but king b1. Wait, what was the moves? Yeah, yeah. Bishop e6, king b1, a4. And rook h to g1. I like that little waiting move. I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's refresh. And Hikaru played uh, 92. With the, I remember he went to f4 here. He went knight f4. And he went king b1 now. It's always a good move to make. Castling. And then he put the rook on c1, right? He does this often. This is like, I've seen him play this many times, weirdly enough. Knight to e6, or e8, sorry. Knight moving around, maybe going f5. That's, that's going to be bad, though. I think it's going to be pretty bad for me. And then knight f4, attacking the bishop. Okay, knight d6, action. I think he played queen c5 here. Oh, he played a4. Let's go back. All right, so engine says queen c5, a4, and king a1. This idea here, guys, was so sick, bro. Like, he did a4, and then, like, bro, this was sick. Like, this was amazing. 
right here, bro. Like this was sick. Bro. But I was like, yo, this is crazy. Ikaro just really is good. Like, <laughs> bro, like it's it's crazy. It's really good, bro. A5 was an amazing move. Which most people you could make this, but he really just gave up the pawn. The game, you, you have like you're gonna take this pawn. You're gonna take this pawn, right? But I think he plays he plays queen b4 first here, which I like. I mean, look at this. Look at this move. Queen to b4. What a move. Knight a3 check. Sheesh, like wow. He comes up with all kind of moves, right? Queen c3. And then he takes the pawn. And he gets the pawn. Like he literally gets the pawn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? I mean, you gotta be really confident. And also calculating wise as well. Like you have to you have to see this. Like he didn't blunder this. This was like all calculated from Hikaru 55 head. Bruh. Ridiculous. What's good, Kenty? What up, Dylan? Dylan? Calculated and played knight g5. This was beautiful, hitting this bishop. Right? So now the threat is if you look, if you do anything crazy, I'm gonna take on e6 and knight takes f7. Right, i.e. example here, h6, you are blocking with your whole face on national television. Right, knight takes, hitting there, splitting. I don't care what you do. Thank you. Appreciate the generosity there, right? I mean, this is GG. This is game over. Real fast. Real fast. So that's the threat is taking and then forking. Very nasty stuff. So he plays Rook F8, handles all that. <laughs> well, at least I think, at least you think he handles all of it. And then he takes on G6. Oh my goodness. Bruh. Did y'all remember where, who was watching this live? I did not see this live. But when I saw the uh, in game live, which we're going to get into, but who got, who saw this live? Wow. I mean, probably the it was wild. I, f I figured it was because this is not a move that you take lightly, my guy. He played bishop takes g6. Like I'm sure I don't even know if Rich Richard probably saw this, but I don't know. I mean, you could definitely say you, you, he probably didn't see this. Let's flip the board. Let's flip the board. Bishop g6 is probably a move. Like uh, maybe he could play it. Maybe he, he might. We don't know, right? What did, what did he say in an interview? If anybody saw that, but bishop g6 is a wild move. Oh my goodness. It's this is ridiculous. Bishop takes g6 is some insane calculation. Bishop takes, and I don't think, yeah, he didn't even take it, right? He played knight b3, but I was like, I mean, we got to see what happens, right? <laughs> you have to. Pawn takes, and then you're going to take probably this way. I don't think it matters, but move order definitely, I'm sure it probably matters somehow, but, and I think it's this way, like this move. Is that the move? Oh my goodness, bishop f5. I just found this. <laughs> bishop f5, you're looking crazy. Bruh. Terrible. Bishop F5, that's a crazy move. But this one. Pawn takes and a knight g6. And he gets it back. But he gets these. He get, he has the extra pawns. Like, I mean, how did he evaluate this? Like, oh, I'm better. You know, because I got the two the two juicers here, right? So I'm sure that's exactly what he said too. Like <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got my take. I got the two juicers, right? Like in his head, calculating, you know, read you all got the two juicers, bro. Like it's easy and probably just crushing with the knights on the other side of civilization. Looking crazy. Wow. Like this is a absolute beautiful display of peace play here. And like calculation. I'm actually, I think this was the correct line. No, let me just see. After bishop takes g6, I want to know h takes. So it is knight g takes. And then he's supposed to move the rook and just not allow any of this to happen. So rook f to g8, knight to g5, and f, f6, and g5. Wow, this is nuts. Look at these knights, these knights, right? That's crazy. Rook g6, knight g5. So it's a knight's game. This would be, this would be a great instructional position even. Correct. Yeah, this whole game is instructional, Cuddly. Like, in, and in fact, even an end game too, which we will get to that. So he he plays knight b three here. I really wanted to see what happened if he would have captured. Obviously, just like see, but then he took on he took the bishop. I mean, literally just obliterated. Like, look at this for a second. There are four pieces, or like at least like you know, th there's stuff over here. There is a queen side. There's a queen side, and then in a few moves, bang, hit him there. And then it's not there. like everything left Bruh. in like two moves, bro. It was crazy. It was very, very cool to see everything left. So bishop takes g6, knight takes, and then knight takes. Boom. We're going to sack the exchange. It's obvious. He hits the bishop. 
We move the bishop, he takes. Takes, we, I think he took back with the king. Maybe he takes with the rook, I don't remember here. Oh, he takes with the king, okay. Keeps this good, and actually I think because maybe here. And then you play here, and then maybe f4, excuse me, f4, g5. That looks about right. But he took with the king, and then rook g7, knight f6, and then g5. I seen Vichy. I saw Vichy looking at something like this before it happened, too. Before it happened. I saw Vichy. I think he was looking at this <laughs> before it actually happened, because that's just how Vichy is. Like, he was, like, moving the pieces. Oh, is this is going to be it. And then, it, obviously, it happened, right? Night, bro. Stay up. You too, Rich. Love, man. What's up, Jay? Thanks for the follow. So he takes, takes, and then we get this position where, I mean, obviously, White's the one pushing. Yeah, Vichy's just different, ain't he? Nine Lurk had this position up and was looking at it with Ketty, blah, 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 and then it just happened. And, like, Ikara and Mr. Report did it. And I remember he stopped right here, but this is exactly what they did. They got to this line, and it was... Is it? And yeah, this is no. This is um. This was from um. This was uh, a few days ago. Like they haven't. They played already, to say the least. I legit remember that part on the stream. Do you remember that nine lark? That's crazy, bro. That's literally crazy. It takes H four. I was looking. I'm like, dang, this actually happened because it was up here in the little corner. You know where you can watch the video of chess.com. So I saw I was watching it there. It's pretty fire. So H four. Obviously, we press it for more. If it's not richer report or somebody very strong. I mean, many people are going down just right now. So you have to find a very good series of moves, even to stay in the game, right? Even to stay in the game. Oh, good luck, Griswold. Good luck, Griswold. Okay, so Rook takes H5, H6, and can we just... Well, it's not trapped. He has Rook H8. Oh, and this is, this is the part where I started watching, actually. I think I was watching around this part. You put the bishop here, and you walk the king over. You walk the king up, and you Rook lift. And this is a good plan, great plan. Activity of the Rook. But the pawn is really blocked. And after you get all of this over here, I mean, you know, we'll kind of see. But all right, so let's see what happens, though. Let's see what happens. All right, so boom. King d2, he walks over. King e2, king up. King g4, right? All this happened. Check, bishop here, king g5. And now here, this got very interesting here. I'm like, I was like, well, what do we do next? I remember looking here, and I was like, what's the plan? And it's plus four, as you see. Right, evaluation. But here, I mean, uh, you, you have to figure this out. Yes, it's plus four, but you still got to do the work, right? So here, I'm like, what? I was actually really looking around, like, what do I do next? I was really trying to figure that out. I was like, where do I put this rook at? Rook f6 actually blunders. Who can spot the blunder? Rook f6 is an absolute blunder. Are you on your tactics, chat? What happens on rook f6? I knew, I knew, I was like, oh, rig f6. The rig f6 obviously hits the e6 pawn, which looks great. It looks absolutely great, but it actually loses on the spot. We have check, late fork from start in, very nice. 94 check, 94 is correct, guys, ouch. Bruh. And the problem is, is that, oh, wait, I could just take this. But then after bishop takes, rook takes, get the man off the board. Start a new one, right? That's a wrap. So... You know, that doesn't work. So you have to do something else. You have to do something else. You can't go rook f5, obvious, obvious. Like, you can't do none of these. In fact, with the rook lift, you only do have rook f4. Makes total sense. And then here, it does maybe f3 and e4 with pushes here. But even still, I need to see, you know, what's my progress. But, so what happens? Oh, he played 94. So if a4, was it just e4 just winning? Is e4 just winning? Um, do I play e4 or f3? This is the question. What happens if I go F3? I mean, maybe I could do anything. Maybe not. F3, nice C4. Now I'm getting a little worried, actually. Slightly worried, because this is kind of annoying, right? You know, this is why you have to be very accurate in this stuff. Very, very accurate in this kind of stuff. This is uh, very annoying. Very annoying. Oh, but we do have Rook F7, actually, if the knight moves. But what if he, like, moves here? You still have to get this move order right. Because, like, you know, there's cases, like, we'll say, well, maybe I'll mate him. Maybe I'll mate him. Here's a, a scenario, right? Knight c4, and I go rook f7, uh, and in a perfect world, right? King h6, king goes back to g8. He takes, and he's able to queen, but we can mate him at the right time. So we should have enough time to do this, especially if he goes knight c4 immediately. Like, f3, knight c4, check, takes. Like, there's not enough time. He gets made it now. But let's say the pawn, even if the pawn is on a2, Queening right now, we still would mate, is the idea. Think here, so it's just kind of zugged out, meaning Zugzwang, there's nothing to do. 
Black Flag has no more. He's going to run out of moves. He's going to run out. Maybe you could just like shuffle back and forth until he runs out of moves. No, but that would be stupid because like he could just do this. Like, why would you do that anyway? Why would you? What happens if F7 with the right? Yeah, there you go. Pepper Conte, right. Rick F7 doesn't work now, obviously, because the night. Obviously, because the night, but. Okay, so let's move on. Oh, let's refresh here. <clears throat> okay, Rick F4, he played 94. There was really no other moves. Wow, A4, Rick H8. I mean, it's miserable. Yeah, so he played what he what he had to, 94, to get some chances in this Rook in game. Now I'm hitting F2. No F4. Check here, King F6. Okay, maybe annoying. Ricky 5, H6. Okay, here we go. What did he play? He played F4, allowed the check. Right? Check comes. He goes back. King F6. But maybe I just push outside. Take this way and come and get these. I also have the two connected juicers here. Game time. Um, yo, can't see how this thing is going. No drama tonight. Just chess. Yeah, just chess. Just chess. No drama tonight. That was great. You haven't seen that video there. That was crazy. From about Anish Giri and the Twitter. Whoa. Whoa. All right. So uh, let's see what happens, though. Next was Rick B5 here. Allowing Rook takes because he's going to grab his own counterplay. Say, I got my own, bro. I got my own. Takes. He pushes first. Check up. All right. So here we go. Let's think about this. If I push. I'm so tempted to push this on my guy. I mean, very tempted. But you want to slow down. Have some patience. I'm sure, there's probably a few ways to do it. But let's see what the engine says now. Rook E6, Rook E8. Wow, Rook E8. Interesting. Rook E8. That's what Hikaru played too, bro. He played Rook E8. Like, I mean, I'm telling you, Hikaru is playing great chess, bro. It's insane. Bro, it is nuts. Rook E8. I was definitely, I mean, you know, pass pawns must be pushed. I'm just trying to queen. I'm just trying. Like, I'm like, yo, hey. Hey, we got to get these boys rolling. But Rook E8 is uh is amazing i mean he just played rookie eight bro rookie eight is actually the furthest from what i was thinking rookie six and pushing so it's good to understand you know and try to figure out okay rookie eight and watch the technique this is why it's good to analyze very strong players in games like it's good to understand this stuff right to see oh we played rookie eight when right now we could have played any of these moves and if you would have the engine on or you're looking with the moves here you see it instantly you don't learn anything right so you need to always make sure you're looking at it this way so you can try to figure this out yourself rookie eight's nice you also maybe have some checks as well and you can get around to this pawn beautiful stuff and e4s and f5s and stuff kind of please sorry pretty sure it's lost for white in your line here uh which one would have been you know, which one are you talking about, bro? This is pretty nice. You play Ricky A, though. Takes, check, and then he went over this way. Yeah, he has to cast the pawn. We will see how he does with Eronian. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're talking about Pepper's line? Oh. We will see how he does with Eronian. That is, man, that's going to be a fight. But, of course, you're rooting for Big Dog. You know you're rooting for him. So he gets around. This pawn, obviously hanging. B5, and we got three pawns here, but we still have accuracy to do. B5, speaking of accuracy, wait till we get to the next game. He played, bro, it's nuts. I didn't even see most of it. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't even see. I'd like blitz through it, like blitz through it real fast, moves-wise, um, just to see what happened. And then I looked at the, let me, the accuracy, like, let me not spoil nothing. Check. All right, so we got the three-piece here. This is hanging. So defense is nothing. Like you, defense wouldn't help. Wait. So that's why he moved back. Makes sense. Check them again. Repeat. Always repeat. Pushing the pawn. Okay, this is where I'm getting a little, little annoyed. I might just take this, bro. He just pushed it. Let's be close. Okay. All right. Yeah, five. Walk the king in. I mean, like. All right, Rick here, eight minutes. You can see the time on the side, too, as well. So we push Rick here. What about just sides? Go this way. Oh, he's about to... What? The... Bro, this is why this is crazy. Hold on. He has a real threat right now. This is a real threat. You see what I'm saying? Like, you have to be very careful. 
This is a real threat. B2, B1. But wait. I mean, we're queening too? So maybe we just push it now, but then he goes here again. Which is super annoying. So if I go here, push. Rook here. Queen takes, takes. No, that would be losing. Oh my goodness. So he he just dealt with the problem. He literally just said, yo, I just need to deal with this now. He's gonna, yeah, that's, I remember that 2 9 lurk. That's crazy, right? Yeah, he just got behind the pawn, which is 100% correct. I mean, I understand. Shoot, this is scary. This is kind of what we, you know, expected. Like, yo, we knew he's gonna get some play over here, and we need to be able to stop it. We need to be able to stop it. King c3 with a push. No king g7. Also f5. Very crafty move. e7. Take something if you want to. Bruh. Don't touch nothing, big fella. Don't touch anything. And then he takes the pawn. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, bro. Like, I don't care. He said, no, but he's going for the best. <laughs> and then King vibe. And then here, obviously, the, come on, don't fall for the oh, Come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. Don't fall for it. How many of y'all fell for this today? Be honest. How many of y'all fell for this today? You watching from home, if you watch this from YouTube, Bruh. put it in the comments. How many times have you failed for this today? Or how many times have you done this today, actually? Pretty nice. Pretty nice. No, Griswold. Very good. Very good. Guilty. Ah, caught one. Caught one. Yeah, there we go. Check. Right, and you're in trouble. Or you're giving, you're doing this to someone, which is pretty good as well. He, he brought the king up, obviously, king here and pushing. And we can also take, and we have everything we need. Everything we need. King d7. Oh, this was a beautiful deflection in a way of like, this was just great. This was like, oh, this is a great try, I would say. I mean, this was a beautiful try. Play c5, and it takes, and then check, and I move, and then I go back. Right? I mean, like, this is, and if you, you know, very, if you're not experienced here, like, a lot of people would literally just, like, mess this up. But I was curious to see, was there something wrong with this and blocking? I actually thought about that because I saw him do this and I wanted to know was this what happened here and blocking is he just able to push and queen and it's drawn wow oh my goodness maybe maybe it's not okay so this was winning this felt good like this felt good but I guess it just takes too long we yeah uh, this is uh yeah, but you see how crazy that is that blocking still was not like not your usual Lucina type position or trying to block the check and queen. I mean, even there where there was still some difficulty there, which shows, you know, I mean the tenacity and how much this hard how hard this fight was, right? Queen Trey still wins. Yeah, but that's 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 harder to win, Griswold, because now there's like a thousand checks that you always have to check for. So you gotta check for the checks. <laughs> and then you have the A pawn that's still able to run to as well. Which is still convertible, but it's man, this is this is tougher. Why give yourself them problems? You know, why give yourself them problems? Block with the check, so I could would exactly. You're at nine lurk. Many people would try to go this way and block with the check. I know many people would do this or try to get it to work when there was an easier way. Says Icaro is doing it this way. Step side step, little zigzag, come back. I'm gonna go this way on you, right? I'm gonna go this way. It's so easy to fumble queen and pawn with no time. Exactly, one hundred. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. King c6, rookie one. Defend. I mean, doing the same thing. And don't repeat, right? Because now you're looking draw like, which he would love to. He would love to. The bishop sack to get to this end game with super GM stuff. Yeah. I mean, Hikaru really, bro, showed out this game. He showed out for real. And then wait till the next game. It's, a, it's a, the specialty of what um, you guys have to see. I'm going to show you what I saw on his on, on his next game. That literally like, low, yo, watch out. Okay, Carl was really playing good chess. Bruh. Like, for real. Like, there's a, for real, something going on that he's doing that is really good for his chess right now. So, you play Rook to B4 to hit this pawn, right? Because after B2, you obviously just take it, and then we're going to be queening. And this is easy. King is way too far away. You also have to keep a pawn on an uh, eye on this. In fact, this king literally has to live over here. Because this pawn could be queening, right? They say pass pawn, keep it under lock and key, right? So, you have to do that. And this Rook could do that. But then who's watching this one, right? Like, it's three of them. Like, who's watching this one? But this one got to watch this one. And this, you don't have enough. You don't have, you don't have enough resources. 
So, right. So, but that's that's why I say, go ahead, you can take this, right? You know, you can take this, right? Because obviously you have a rook takes a4, rook takes a4, and then you can't go here. I looked at this line, obviously push, you go here, and you're able to take it. And then this is going to be queening pretty quickly. It's going to be queening pretty quickly here. But let's see. Um, Refresh. Okay. So he played b2. Oh, and then after rook takes, he resigned, right? Oh, no. Rook takes e7, rook a2, then resigns. Then resigns. But let's see why, right? L let's see. You know, let's make a move for white. Like a simple check that doesn't work. I mean, so advanced players, let's say somebody like Rook here, maybe try to take the pawn. All right, let's turn this off. But maybe just Rook takes. And obviously, Rook takes. I can move the king over. This is just an easy way to win. It's really nothing you can do. Your king is so far away. It's so far away. And now I have like a basic Lucina. I think I already have a Lucina position. Like Rook here, right? Push, and then you check me, and I go here. I've already built the bridge, already built it. Lucina and your king is already over here. So this is just winning everywhere. Everything's winning. Everything's winning there in that situation. So after Rook A2, he resigned. He resigned. Kind of crazy, right? I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing. And let me actually check. I just want to check something, actually. So let's see one thing. Okay, cool. Wow. So Hikaru had a 94% accuracy this game. 94. You see this? 94% accuracy. Right. Now watch this. This is the other game. This is the other game. How many moves is this? 30 moves, by the way. Over 30 moves. Let's check. And this was uh this was drawn, which he was able to cl clinch the match here. So we're gonna really kind of blow through this one because this one was 30 moves. It was really in and out. Nothing really happened, really. Nothing really happened. And he didn't have to fight for more. And this was a draw, as you see right here. But look at this. I go to analysis. And you, I don't know if you know you can do this from the events page, guys. You can click on analysis. You can scroll down. And you can see the accuracy, right? Look at he 98? In a, bro, you, this is an over-the-board game. This is an over-the-board game. He had a 94%, which is like, oh, okay, clap it up. Golf claps, right? And then he had a 98. Bruh. Dog, that's, you had 2% less than a perfect game? Are you kidding me? Like, this man playing some very, 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 very good chess right now. It's very, very good, bro. Shout out to you, cover, right? This is amazing. Like, 98%. Now, let's see the game, though. Um, oh, oh, this was, I remember. So, this is very cool. I remember watching this. This, not watching this, but, like, the recap of me looking at this game. This was very cool. How many moves was that? 98? This was 30 moves. Over 30 moves. Right? Or maybe, uh, right at 30? Is it right at 30? Um, 30. Yeah, 30 moves at 98%, dude. 98%. That's very impressive. Exactly, right? Because usually over more moves, you have left at less accuracy. So if you ever had an, oh, I had a 98% accuracy, but yours was like seven moves. <laughs> like, you looking crazy, okay? I mean, hey, great job. Golf clap, golf clap, but it was like seven moves or like 10 moves, right? You And you won the game. So great accuracy, but this was over 30 moves. So this is 98% accuracy, which is extremely impressive, right? He says, my Fritz has a 99.7 accuracy, right? It's engine-like. It's insane. Gross. So very good stuff here, but you see this at this level. This here, though, is not telling anything. It's still like a, it could be anything, basically. So after D3 happens, though, in this D3 move, I like how Ikaru did this. He castles. And this is something, well, I'm, I actually, I don't play this ever. I literally don't. But I want to show you guys, because I never play this way. This is a structure I literally never, ever, ever, ever play. So, uh, but for you guys that do play this structure, it's good to understand how he played this. I was very impressed by this move. I was like, what the heck? First off, go back. Look at this. There's nothing, like, it, it doesn't show up. Many of us, bro, anybody in the chat right now that knows some type of chess that's really good or not good or like what, whatever your rating is, most people here could, well, are going to play C5, right? Maybe B5, A5, Knight D7, but Knight C6 is a, you know, this one, maybe if you're like under a certain rating range, Knight C6 is very appealing to you because that's what you always do. But this isn't necessarily the greatest move because you restrict this pawn which means the rook doesn't get out as much and like you restrict your play. You kind of restrict your play a lot because the knight is blocking the pawn. In fact, they say, here's a famous uh, thing from a uh, reassessor chess. Uh, Jeremy Selman said this, uh, he said, uh, knights work best behind pawns, not in front of them. So if you think about this, if I go C5, my knight is gonna work better behind the pawn 
and not in front of it, blocking it, Bruh. like blocking with your face, right? So that's not good. But usually, when you see Hikaru, when Hikaru did this, I immediately was like, oh, what is, oh, oh, snap. Like, I was like, what is this? I don't know. I don't know. Because usually, this is the King's Indian attack. In the King's Indian attack, their plan is simple. They play, what, C3, I think? Sometimes, not all the times, but E4, Rookie 1, H3. Wait, wait, E4, Rookie 1, H3, Knight F1. Sorry, not H3. It's H4. Knight H4, H5. I used to play this sometimes. Queen go to E2, Bishop F4, you play E5, and you, like, attack them. But Knight C6 is not one that I'm familiar with. I'm literally familiar with Black doing exactly this. There's a pawn storm on this side, and white does the same on this side. But Knight C6 is like, what is he planning to do? I didn't even, I've never seen this, bro. I don't even know. So what I thought was like, well, usually Knight C6 is to push one of these pawns. That's what I thought. I thought he was going to play this. You know, so let's see what happens in the game. Nice C6 was beautiful. I knew this was going to be fire. I knew this was already going to be a fire game. I was like, oh, Nice C6 is legit. I mean, I don't play this structure again. I'm more King's Indian, like, all day, every day. But this, uh, if I ever played this structure, or if you play this structure, this is good to look into against the King's Indian attack, the Nice C6 move. Yeah, bronze. <laughs> Get the canty sound effects on the phone. That's right. That's right. You can lots of stuff that though. With this, yeah, you can do lots of stuff with this Knight C6 move. I'm a big fan of it in this structure. If you ever face, look, Knight C6 is, is sweet, but you have to know the right ideas, obviously. Oh, I played the Knight C6. You don't know what to do. Bruh. I mean, now you're Garbo. Garbage. That's on you. That's on you, bro. Oh, I put the Knight here like Icaro did, and then you still lost. Like, that's on you. There's other aspects to just putting the Knight on C6. So D4, he stops E5, which is a good move, right? You know, touch board, a backwards, Jackie the writer. What's up, bro? So, man, I feel like Garo knows all the openings. I'm pretty sure you do. Man, Garo was trying to... Man oh, well, actually, you don't know um, one opening I played. Actually, y'all can go watch his YouTube video on that. Exactly. Uh, me and I mean, played it when he came to Detroit. I feel like Garo knows all openings. Yes, 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 yes. Except that other one. Fed A, J8, thanks for the follow. Yeah. A D4 move like Grunfeld, yeah, this one. Actually, this is also in reverse in the King's Indian. You will see this a lot in the double finchetto lines. D5 comes after D6, and then after they take on D4, you play D5. So in C4, you trade, right? So yeah, it's the same thing. But they played D4 here to stop E5, but it allowed Knight E4, which was very nice here. I love this move from Ikaro here. Obviously, if you take this, is not looking the greatest. Knight D2, Knight G5, come on out. So Knight D2... Right, you're hitting the pawn, but then we could go f5, I think, here. And this pawn, kind of vulnerable. I like black, though. Because we, we, uh, we're we already equal. We're already playing for, like, more. Like, we got this pawn in white's half of the board here, right? Pawn over there. Like, e5 is potential. Bishop come to e6. Like, we have no worries. This is a good move. This is a good uh, this is a good position, right? Knight e4 is a very strong move from Ikaro here. And then after knight e4, c3. F5, and now I'm like, bro, what happened? Bruh. Like, dang, and this is a dangerous place to be right now for for Richard uh, here. And I say that because this is now somehow transposed into a classical Dutch. For Dutch players, if you play the Dutch defense, this reminds me a lot of some type of Dutch or Stonewall, right? With the knight, the knight can a lot of times come to C6. The structure is the same. The knight goes to E4. The bishop is on e7. The bishop can still go this route. You can still use the queen and go this route. All the same ideas you get in the Dutch. So out of somewhere, out of nowhere, this came, this became a Dutch. And Hikaru is a monster in the Dutch, if you don't know. Look up his games, Leningrad monster. In fact, he would play a lot of Leningrad, and that's different with the bishop on g7 instead of e7. e7 is more classical, bishop g7 is Leningrad. But he would play a lot of Leningrad positions, but I mean, this is similar. The bishop just plays differently, so... Having knowledge of different openings can definitely help you. In fact, Magnus says you should play different openings to become a better player. But it's important to understand different openings because he went from like a Queen's Gambit decline to like some type of better, slightly better Dutch here, which is very good for Hikaru here. I mean, very good. You're like playing for two results at this point. I mean, it's still, still work to do, obviously. But I would feel comfortable at least to feel like I can play for two results, meaning I'm drawing and, um, and winning. So 91. 91 and e5 i mean if i'm able to break e5 i mean you can't tell me i'm not at least equal here with the black pieces i'm feeling great knight f3 bishop f6 
e3 and b6 right another idea you will see but obviously this is an a, a just a general idea period the bishop's not the greatest here you don't want to really put him on e6 you can but what does he really do and this is a great diagonal for him to be on also threatening that knight goes to d3 rook to e8 defends the pawn really took no rich uh no no risk here um, against rich risk rich rich risk wow rich risk he has like the dutch if you van play e5 if you can play it e5 do it yeah the dutch is uh yeah in, in e5 that's correct jackie the writer says if e5 in the dutch that's correct and he actually played that which is e5 rook to e1 and then he played bishop a6 so everything's out developed besides the queen and the two rooks connection obviously we're gonna bring that boy up that's annoying i think he played queen d7 here which is exactly what we just said too oh he took first okay just re relieving pressure makes sense no overloaded yeah because the queen may be overloaded here after some lines with pawn takes and knight takes and then queen takes d5 after uh, um wait but no that would be defended now but it still feels slightly probably overloaded with the knight here there's less pressure now and the queen goes to d7 we're in the rook to d8 rook to d8 yeah rook d8 b4 is this a real threat I don't think so. I don't really care about that. Do I? Do I really care about this? What do we do? Maybe take it? All right, let's see what he did. He played queen e6. Interesting. I have no idea. Where, he, where is he about to go next? Maybe knight e7. Just getting out the way. Oh, knight a5 getting ready for it. So he had that in mind to put the knight on c4. Very good. Takes. Takes. Whoa. Uh-oh. Okay, this is spicy. What? It, what? Hold on. This is hanging. Yo, this is hanging. Bruh. Okay, bishop takes. Okay, we got to see what happens. Like, you can't just do that. Oh, it's probably here. Oh, my goodness. It's probably knight takes f2. Huskies, look at that. Yeah, Huskies on it. You see that, Huskies? It's probably this. Oh, my goodness. It's probably this right here, big fella. And then king f3, I mean, come on, your king is on f3. Bruh. We're not even going to look at that. Your king on f3. King f1, rook f8, or bishop takes. Maybe takes first. I am getting this. Threatening mate, and that doesn't work. Wow. That doesn't work. So rook here? Apparently, that's better. It's like equal here. This is a plus one. <laughs> what do you do then? Okay, queen takes? Nope, not a move. Knight c4, not a move. G6, uh, better. Okay, you know what? Let's see what they want from us. Uh, after that line, we got to see. We got to see for ourselves, chat. King takes, check. Takes, king f1. Wow, and here are the moves. Queen h1. Uh, but queen h1 was like, my, my queen's hanging. I have to move it again. If king f2. Hey, it's even showing you right here. That's annoying. King F1, so they're saying repeat and then play G6, which is the same thing as the second line, which is G6. The engine always does that stupid thing. G6, and then Queen E2. And this is insane. You see how this is difficult, how easily you can mess that up? Bishop takes, all these look right, but the move is like G6. Rook F8 is the worst of the three, which is still a move. That's crazy. I think he would have drawn a game here. Oh, just repeat? Yeah, actually, you're right. Actually, because that's all he needs. He doesn't need to win. Yeah, that's right. So taking the draw, shoot, you can take those. Yeah, I just need the draw. Very nice. So Bishop G2, going back to F6. You trying to, you want to draw, big fella? A4. Takes. You want to draw, bro? No, he said no. C5. Yeah, let me move over here. Okay, I'm just going to move through. He got the knights here. D's knights from Ikaro. Bruh. D's knights look real nice here. Look real nice, real nice. Rook c8. I mean, look at the, like this. Sheesh. You better be careful not to lose. It's white, right? Like these are very good. But you do have, you're, you're fighting against the bishop here and no weaknesses, right? No, besides the a4 pawn, which is restricted very nicely. So, um, yes, yeah, no, nothing. It's going to follow happy new. Play a6, maybe to strengthen and play b5. And if you play a5, I play b5, Petrosian style, pushing past you. Uh, rook b3, rook c6, defending. Now, yeah, this is nothing. Unbelievable. Look at this blockade, bro. That's just, this was perfect. 
This was like perfect chess, dude. This is insane. I mean, he had 98%, again. 98% OTB from Ikaro over 30 moves. Um, if you missed that, that's right here. If you're in the events page, 98% right there. This whole game, over 30 moves, 98% from Ikaro. Nuts stuff. So last few moves here was Rook C6, Rook B1. And after G5, I guess he offered a draw here. And it was accepted. I'm not sure how they drew. But usually, usually after you, if you make the move and then they draw immediately after, usually they offer the draw. But not, not technically don't really know. But G5 was the last move here. And then they agreed to a draw here. So that was it. And he kind of moves on, bro. He offered it. Yeah, yeah. So this was fire. This was like fire. Is this a blitz game? This was definitely not a blitz game. Oh, definitely not, big fella. Let me refresh. You see that time over there on the left, my guy? That tells you right there. Hour and 30. Sheesh. Per side. And I think they don't get increment, right? Oh, they do. I think they do get increment. Yeah. I think they're getting increment, which is 30 second increment as well, which is these are long games. 90 plus 30. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This one's going on YouTube as well. This was the recap for Grand Prix Knockouts. And we'll see you on the next video.